time but as a feeling people get when they like each other a lot. Love is when you, um, when you, you would die for somebody. There we go. Um, love is, love is something that is intangible, but you would do anything to die for that person and say, I have an un, you know, you can ask all my friends, undoubtable love for animals. Mm -hmm. Any animal. Like, you can talk to a arachnid or anything, but I would literally die for an arachnid. Like, I, a little strange, but you know, like, and I was also dying for my parents and my good friends. So, um, if you and I love those people, um, like my ex as well, I, um, I love and I loved and I still do love him, even though we are completely broken up. And it, we went about, it wasn't to that point until about a month and a half, two months in. And then we started saying, like, I love you, it's a seven month relationship. And that's when I knew I would really, like, die for this person. You know, I would take a bullet for them, I would do anything. Love is, like, this strong feeling that you get for, like, somebody who, it's not, like, the same type of love that you would love for, like, your family, but it's, like, this strong feeling that you feel, like, in your heart. romantic affection where one sacrifices for the well-being of the other person. Uh, to me, from what I see from most of my friends that are in pretty good relationships or however long most marriages do last nowadays, I would say honestly that's love. I mean, when you can actually stand the person that's sitting next to you or stand the person that's <laughs> being around you and trying to figure out who they are or you already have figured out who they are I would say that's love when you can stand their issues you can stand them you can stand being around them and you can truly care about them even throughout all the aggravations and stress they give you I say that is love hello I'm gonna talk about love in love from my point of view. I honestly haven't experienced any love, like true love. I only I always had these puppy loves in like elementary school and stuff, but I was pretty much in it. And but I have I have friends that I love and I know that I love them because they make my day a whole lot better than what it was. And they make me feel better and they make me happy, they make me laugh, they make me smile, they make my cheek hurts, they are the ones responsible for my massive wrinkles when I grow up because I smile so much. And I appreciate them. I, I care about them. I trust them. And I enjoy spending time with them. And I believe that is love, you know? person just be, being genuinely yourself whether you're a mean person you know you can find love you can still find love with someone with similar attributes or someone maybe with an opposite you know like opposite to track you can find love anywhere actually but what I found is you cannot look for love that's what I found I, I've never been if I've been looking for, for, for love or looking for a relationship or looking for friends I can't find it in that moment. They usually happen randomly, you know, and so, um, I don't know, it's just, 
I think love just happens naturally, but it can also happen on an online dating site too, um, I believe, because you know, if you really connect with a person and you really get to know them, you can have feelings for them, you really can. So, and then you get to that point where you start loving them. But I think overall, no matter how you meet the person, it has to develop naturally over a period of time. Honestly, I, I would say that's a stupid question to ask. No offense. No, I, me personally, I would say from my experiences, you can't really find love. It'll just slap you in the face pretty much. I mean, like they always say on those little romantical movies, you will feel it pretty much. You will feel what love is. You will feel that you will love that person that's next to you. Like I said, honestly, I, I, I can't really say too much about that because I'm young, you know, I'm, I'm still in my prime right now and I can't, and yes, most of my friends that are about my age have so-called experiences that, but in the end, we all don't know what true, true love is until we actually get married and we have kids and we go through life with the one day step at a time. Um, I don't think you can go like look for love. I think that love comes to you, but once it's there, you gotta fight for it. You have to take initiative. You gotta, you know, you gotta. Yeah. But then it might be a few bumps on the road. But I mean, who cares if there is? You just gotta fix it. You gotta do what you gotta do. Did you roll? Yes. Okay. Um, you can't really find love, in my opinion. It just kind of happens and just out of nowhere. You don't really find it. Love kind of finds you. Like the person kind of like come to you. You don't want really to go to that person. Uh, number three, how do you know you're in love? Like I said before, when you can pretty much stand that person, because I know honestly, Half the females I used to talk to in the past, I could not stand them worth to save my life. I've never, I haven't been in a relationship since eighth grade. I've only told four females that I've so-called loved them, and I guess I meant it at the time. But at the same time, I got screwed over pretty much by all four of them. So now I'm like, eh, love is really just something for older people, you know. I can't really say, you know, I'm not down in every female, and I'm not saying that every female is not good, and I'm not saying every female is not bad, this and that. Of course, there's good females out there. Y'all is just dumb enough that she date the dudes that, that pretty much treat y'all like trash. I don't know why, but that's y'all. But yes, uh, how do you, like I said, how do you know you're in love? Uh, you can stomach that person that's next to you. You can see through all their flaws, all their mess, all their issues, all their past issues, future issues that might pop up in the end. That's how you know you're pretty much in love. When you two can easily break up and come back together with no problems and no issues, when you two can't stand not being around each other, even after y'all had an argument, that's when I say y'all can, can say y'all are truly in love. I, I've been through a lot. I've been through enough to say that I'm truly blessed to still be living here, dealing with females, put it that way. For me, again, uh, how do I know in love is because when I'm willing to die for that person or do anything, anything for that person. Um, when you, for me, when I knew I was in love, I, um, it's not just saying it. You know, it, it's you can you can feel it even before you voice it out loud. Like a lot of the times, you you say, "When I was in love with with my boyfriend," and I didn't even say it, but I knew I knew a month or two before. Like I was like, "I'm in love with him." Like I I but I wouldn't voice it. I never voiced it myself. You just sort of know, and sometimes you can't figure it out. But um, but it just sort of. Just sort of comes naturally, and you know sometimes you go in relationships. You know, this is a little weird, but <laughs> sometimes you go in relationships and you don't really, you don't really know what you're getting into and stuff. And 
and you don't really have that many. Either it's like too similar of interest or it's not similar enough, you know, so it, it doesn't really click. But then you're in a, you know, monogamous or polygamy, we learned about in sociology, yeah. relationship where it's just, um, you can you can just fall in love. So it's unconditional love. Un completely unconditional you get butterflies, like you're really happy to talk to that person. Like you get upset when you don't talk to that person. Like when you do talk to them, like all butterflies and like scared and stuff. You're in love when you are. Well, first of all, you'll get the feeling in this area where it's like bubbly. And two, you'll start <laughs> becoming more. You'll be happy around this person like 24/7. You can't help but smile. Um, you'll be willing to make sacrifices so that person can be better off. Um, I have one more reason, but I don't remember it. Um, it's nothing really that serious, but it's just that when you go through enough with females, or you go through enough with certain people, it can put a toll on you. And I'm pretty sure that that's 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 life. You know, I can't get mad. I can't really complain. That's like. <laughs> You'll start acting like strange around the person, like you'll be more expressive and louder and you'll tend to laugh a lot more. It's hard to explain, but you'll know it when you see it. I guess you get this feeling in your stomach. You feel this pull towards something. And you know it's true love. You feel it. You just... Your mood is just helped me a whole lot better than what it used to be. You're not as grumpy and you're always like happy and smiling and you're just like, Oh my god, I love life. It's like, it's like a high. Yeah? It's kind of, yeah, it's like a high. <laughs> and, I don't know, life without love, it's like boobs without nipples, right? Because it's pointless. Because happiness comes from love. And if you don't love anything, how can you be happy? And if you're not happy, you're pretty much sad and depressing, and that's what your whole life's gonna be. And that's pretty much pointless. Living a bad life. Not really bad, but a sad life. Right? So, I mean, it's up to you how you wanna do it. It's all up to you. And that's how I see it. Mr. Lucas, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me how we got here and why it is you've needed to come to court to get this car back? Well, um, Your Honor, I was, we, everything, there was nothing wrong. Nothing. You know, everything was normal at my house. Everything was normal? Had nothing wrong. Nothing. Rashida told me, baby, I'll be back. And she left, you know, this was back in November. Mrs. Lucas? Mr. Lucas says you had a great relationship. Yes, we had a wonderful relationship. Why don't you tell me what was wonderful about it? Um, it was wonderful. Um, we were like best friends. I believe, you know, he's my soulmate. Everything was fine except... Except? Him. He was too nice. It's too nice. How, I mean, how does one be too nice to one's wife? <laughs> he was too nice, like, it was scary nice. You know, <laughs> it was like, you know, <laughs> you know the people that's, that's, it was like stalkerish nice, like, you too nice, it's too good to be an example, because I, I, I cannot conceive of the world that you have structured for me here. Right, I mean, you know, too nice, like, you know, he would say, I love you, and it was like, I was like, okay, I was waiting for the punch, when you gonna kick me, it's scary. Some people just, you know, just, you could be nice, but Mrs. you could be Lucas, too nice. you're going to have to do better than that. Mm -hmm. He told you he loved you, and this was a problem. You put up your hands like, when is the punch going to come? You've been married for five years. Has he punched you yet? No. no. He's a he doesn't man. punch you. He's a He's wonderful not, man. Yeah, I'm just not so used to that. So the I love you is too much for you. It's, it's not too much, but you don't have to tell me, like, twice a week. <laughs> Uh, can't figure that. 
So if I found you a brother that would run around on you, call your names and smack you upside the head, you'd be in heaven. So no, he don't have to call me names or smack me, but... He can run around on you. No, not that either, but... What do you want from a man, Mrs. Lucas? Yes. I mean... <laughs> she, she told me that's what she wanted. What did she tell you she wanted? Well, she told me she wanted somebody to, 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 to cherish her and, and to don't run around on her. She, you know, all the things that a good man and a good woman should want out of each other. We agreed that because I had been married before and my, my ex-wife, oh my goodness, she scared me. <laughs> if I ever did it again, it was going to be better than any other marriage and I made the promise to, for keeps. This wasn't to be playing around, you know, and if nothing's wrong, where are you going? You know, it's, it's a, there are women that would pull her head off her neck for a guy like me. I'm going to ask you one more time. He made me gain weight. Okay, that. how did he make you gain weight? Because, I mean, now the man can cook. Brother can throw down. But he would, I mean, he cooked full course meals for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Two o'clock in the morning, if I was hungry, he wouldn't fix me a sandwich. This man would make a whole meatloaf. Potatoes, a gravy, vegetables, a big stupid cup of Kool-Aid. I go to sleep right on that. Get up in the morning, he done fix French toast, pancakes, grits, biscuits. So now I'm laying on food, on top of the food I just laid on a couple of hours ago. So your complaint is... <laughs> that this man cooked too often and too well and... And he made me gain weight. Mrs. Lucas, have you lost your mind? <laughs> no. I have women coming in here whose men are leaving them because they got too heavy. You got heavy based on his. But they won't cook, they won't clean, they won't pick up the house, they're controlling, they're unkind. You have got a guy who cooks for you. You have got a guy who doesn't care what size you are. You have got a guy who, no, 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 who tells you that he loves you without being prompted or looking for sex. And you're telling me that you want to leave him because he treats a good black woman, which we're going to have to qualify, <laughs> like good black women a queen ought to be treated. And what you're doing, what you're doing is taking a very self, I am a self-centered individual. And I don't appreciate what a man has brought to my table. So I'm going to make up some stupid reason yeah, yeah. to say what it, it, it is it's stupid it's, it, it, and I, I, I very rarely say that about anybody do I Joe very I rarely. don't say things are stupid very rarely because people have odd points of view that's okay I need a bit. How many guys see a cute girl and look at it and the first thought that comes to his mind is, you know what? She probably got a great personality. I would love to get to know her. In a perfect world, maybe. But in real life, I'm trying to figure out why you still got your clothes on. Yeah, I understand. We just met. But you know. So? I need a female that when I come, she got to take care of that. Education. I don't want, I want a Beyonce catered to you type of chick. I want single ladies put a ring on it, a ring finger on the end. She, I don't want to sit. Nobody won't marry you. I need a girl that has been through all kind of hell. She's been shot at and stabbed before because she's going to have more appreciation for life. I usually uh, don't mess with educated girls because educated girls feel like they entitled to an opinion. And opinionated girls talk back. I ain't asked you. I ain't
But yet, you still feel the need to tell me your thoughts in the way that you feel about the situation. Fuck are you? I need a girl that's not going to be afraid to follow me. Say we in church, I need a girl that's going to reach and grab me, close the Bibles up, and go out to the park and get it popping. Honestly, the only thing that you really have to know is how to get to my mother house. Nine times out of ten, that's, that's where I'm going to be when you pick me up. So, if you're smart enough to do that, you know, we good. The thing that I really need most of all, a girl that understands me and my struggles. You understand what I'm saying? Look, let me, let me put it like this. If you are able to get a job at like McDonald's or something like that, then you probably overqualified to be my girl because I can't I can't be with nobody that's doing better than me you know and that's pretty much it